Vad är holmat? Vad är akt? Man gör sin dan sastal mal kvi hofta dig. Dan dan lodi mig lamus mu vaimu. Jag mig lämna sjuk gucka mu melde. Man är kun jua det här som muista lusa. Jag är kun jua det här som alla mu muista lusa. As we all know, science often confirms what many indigenous people have been saying in songs, in stories, in their worldview for thousands of years. Now, of course, it seems uh, self-evident that rhythm is central to life. Our hearts beat trees pulse, the tides pull, the sun rises. But why was it that so many educated, sophisticated men, some of them scientists, sought to silence a simple rhythm instrument? This drum, a circle of wood, and skin that speaks to life, speaks of life to life. Here is my story. I hope it will inspire you. Ei on loil, ori on loil. Kula kula neita kanta, kula maatu taldu churav. Moni naata hiet nandu elava. Mirko tuupo, kuori tuupo. Mirko tuupo, kuori tuupo. Kula iena neita kanta, kula maata rahku iena. Iena lämmin puaka jäät. So you swear it here, Chayat. So you swear it here, Chayat. Hey, on loyal, 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 hey, on loyal. Hi. This song is called Gula Gula. In English, hear the voices of the four mothers. It has been with me for decades now. It has become like a dear old friend. It has, together with my other songs, accompanied me all over the world, to cities, towns, festivals, small intimate stages, and concert halls. And everywhere I go, I meet people who tell me, your songs bring back forgotten dreams. People in big cities ask me, how is it possible that I feel your songs talk to me, touch something deep inside me, even if I don't understand your words? I don't always have an answer. I have the same questions in me, and they have led me to dive deeper into my ancestral heritage. My name is Mari Boyne. My traditional name is Krecht Abir Ristin Mari, which means Mari, daughter of Ristin, daughter of Birt, who was the daughter of Krechta. I grew up in Sápmi, where I still live. Those who colonized us gave other, our land other names. Northern Scandinavia, Northern Norway, Finnmark, Lapland, the Arctic. But for us, this is 
Sami Iena, where our ancestors have survived under harsh condi conditions for 10,000 years, ever since the last ice age. The idea for Gula Gula came to me through an old yoik, our traditional song and its rhythm. The lyrics woke me up one night and so to say demanded to be born. In our culture, we believe that our ancestors can bring us messages through dreams if we are open if we are listening. Iena lea min buaka jätni. Sujus suari tihecha jätmit. The earth is our mother. If we harm her, we die with her. This was the main message. The ancestors sent this old wisdom common to indigenous peoples all over the world as a warning, as a reminder. I grew up by the most beautiful river, Anadjoka, which due to colonization became the border between Norway and Finland. We harvested and gathered from nature. My father and mother fished for salmon. So did the other families around us. Grandmothers and mothers and aunts took us children on countless trips to pick berries. My uncles and brothers hunted, put up snares, and went to check the snares in the morning. Our summers were full of all kinds of gifts from nature. And our elders taught us how to preserve them to survive the long winters. Their unspoken message was, never take more than you need and what nature can tolerate. Leave a place like it was before you arrived. In parallel with this wonderful freedom, there was another reality a strict religion that was introduced into Sapmi by pietistic men who wanted to control all that was wild, savage, fruitful, and above all, feminine. My parents belonged to the part of my people who chose or were forced by circumstance to take seriously this doctrine. Foreign priests and missionaries had for hundreds of years built churches in Sapmi, worked to purge it of what they called paganism, banned and burned our drums, punished our spiritual leaders, the Noides, filled our people with self-hate and shame, and convinced them their animistic outlook on life their reverence for Mother Nature was devil worship. So it was that my father, 
filled with this alien fear of sin and hell, gave long sermons on guilt, sin, and shame. And so it was that he tried to protect his children from our so-called demonic legacy, our godless history. I also grew up with a view of a sacred mountain, Eiligos, with a sacred spring in the neighborhood, Sutesaya. But this, I didn't know then. But these were never mentioned or talked about, neither at school nor home. Nor was it ever mentioned that we used to ask permission from nature before we cut down a tree or branch. What I grew up with were stories from the Bible saying that man should rule over nature and that man should rule over woman. No stories saying that the animals and everything in nature were our relatives and should be treated with respect. I later learned that the yoik, our traditional singing, is a way of remembering. The knowledge was passed on through yoik from one generation to the other. Every child was given a yoik and welcomed to life and the society by a yoik. We don't sing about, we sing into being a person, landscape, animal, situation. In the beginning, there was not much yoik in my music. My first years as a singer, I knew very little about my own culture. But I discovered the healing in music. I discovered that the music opened up a whole new world for me. I had grown up more with Christian hymns and pop music. So first, there were these songs of therapy, some of them full of rage. As women, we are socialized to never express our rage and anger. But my experience is that there is a lot of healing in facing the rage inside you, as long as you use it wisely. And the more I learned about my people's history, the more songs of rage came out. I used anger as a force to redirect colonial shame, to heal the trauma of dispossession and strengthen my connection to nature. And yes, I assure you, there were waves of shock in my family. Wehe <laughs> This song was a milestone for me. It paved the way back to my ancestral heritage. By diving deep into the richness of our culture, I discovered a way of living with a beautiful philosophy, with a respect for the laws of nature, with a humbleness for the laws of nature. 
For instance, I learned that we always greeted and gave thanks to the land for the gifts we were given. Gave thanks to the salmon who gives its life in order for us to have something to eat. I learned that the wolf and the bear were respected co-inhabitants and so clever that hunters had to use metaphors to describe them when they went out for hunting in order to evade detection. Those who did not assist in the hunt but benefited from the food ritually participated by striking the skinned hide. There was no denial of one's debt to nature. After you had hunted and eaten the meat of the bear, the bones were placed back together and buried in order for the bear to be reborn. This is a powerful reminder of the cycle of life and such a beautiful ritual, isn't it? The song that I started with, Gula Gula, was a song that led me to the, discover the shamanistic beat. Gula Gula was inspired by this traditional song. Chapa maze colle maze le un loyo lo re un loyo le un loyo lo re un loyo lo re un loyo lo re un loyo le un loyo lo re un loyo chaze vela yai go pija maze kira ku maze skubra le un loyo lo re un loyo lo re un loyo lo re un loyo le un loyo lo re un loyo le un loyo lo re un loyo and for the first time, I dared to use a drum, which opened another path to healing. The shamanistic beat is very close to our heartbeat. It is soothing. It can take us on a journey and connect us to the non-rational, non-linear, and spiritual. The beat, this beat is one of the most beautiful gifts I have found. It has been a crucial part of my music ever since. The more knowledge I, as an adult, gained about my own culture and heritage, the more this question came up. Why was it important to silence our heritage, to make it disappear? The more I traveled around the world and became acquainted with other cultures, I realized that this had not only happened in Sapmi, but that this has happened all over the world. To my great joy, I eventually discovered that we, are, we were not only a small different group in Northern Europe. We belong to a family of 370 million indigenous people worldwide. People who have inherited myths, stories, songs, rituals, strategies of survival and life wisdom from those who were here before us and who lived close to their earth and land. And almost everywhere, colonizers demonized, displaced and erased the people and their collective knowledge and history. Why? And why does it still continue today? This question I have been asking many times since I finally, with the help of healing songs, I finally got rid of shame, confusion, and trauma. My songs 
are born in the conflict between indigenous philosophy of life and a culture of greed that has eternal growth as its mantra. In my songs, I have shared stories about what it's like to be a human being in the middle of this conflict. In my lyrics, I continue asking why, while I observe that my people lose trial after trial. Because, among other reasons, it is not possible to prove that we have been here for thousands of years. Because our culture and dwellings left few traces. It is an irony of fate that the fact that our culture was sustainable creates problems for my people today. Some claim that in order to succeed in the modern world, we need to leave all the old ways behind. I belong to those who think we should take with us the best from our ancestral heritage and dare to take it with us into the new world of technology and science. Therefore, my music has always consisted of old traditional elements and modern musical expressions. All over the world, this is our ultimate challenge, to restore the ancient wisdom and survival strategies that were sacrificed in the name of progress. Is it possible that those most responsible for colonization's damage to listen to indigenous knowledge, to take our advice? Is it naive to think that it is possible? My dream is a future where the best of science can meet the best of indigenous knowledge with curiosity and with respect. And together we could build a more sustainable world. The UN, UN climate report that came out a few months ago states that it's, it's extremely urgent to change course. Around the world, many of us have started to remember and take back the wisdom and knowledge of our ancestors. Many of us are trying to communicate this wisdom and knowledge because we see that it is now urgent to save Mother Earth. Every day, I look for small signs of hope, and I'm so happy every time I find such, because they are there. I am one who carries the old songs, the old wisdom, and one who carries the torch given by the ancestors with a flame that should never go out. Hey, I'm loyal, 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 hey, I'm loyal. Kula <laughs> 
Soyo suare ti hia chaya Soyo suare ti hia chaya He un loyo lo he un loyo He un loyo lo he un loyo He un loyo lo he un loyo He un loyo he un loyo He un loyo lo he un loyo Lakko tiik tani ja paino Lakko iske melde kit Kuula maatun talu siel Ikka muhte kostun buleg Ikka muhte kostun buleg Tus lähuat päätus läbi ei Lulli aamri harve vuutin Ruana iet man käde keritun Ikka muhte kostun buleg Ikka muhte kostun buleg Oja haia, oi haia Oja haia, haia haia Kuula, kuula, neida kanta, kuula maatu tallus tjula, maani naata hitnandu elab, mirko duvo kuori duvo, mirko duvo kuori duvo. Hea nai, naia nai, nea nai, naia nai, neo noi, nea hanna, eo ho, aia han, eo ho, aia han, eo ho, aia han, eo ho, aia han. Kiitu, tamke.